with the scope of work that was given to Outpost, obviously um, the the silo itself is very deep. Is about I think it's 147 levels or something like that, and um, Outposts were tasked with two of those levels, so um, we were dealing with the down deep, which is the mechanical generator level, and then the kind of hidden excavator, the digger, which was used to bore the silo. So we had those sort of two environments, which covered basically episode two and three in bulk, and then sporadic sort of sections throughout the rest of the series. With regards to those sort of environments, the the, the two quite distinct environments. One was a kind of functional, um, you know, environment that powered the whole silo, and the other was a hidden kind of um, relic from the past, which is all kind of dilapidated. And the the sort of approach that was taken was that the generator room, if you imagine a circle, they kind of built a, like a slice of a pie, if you like. Um, so we had a section, um, a number of degrees of this kind of circle covered, and then the rest of it was blue screen. Um, so we had to kind of obviously facilitate uh, the building of, of the rest of the environment, but also there were limitations as to how high they could go in the studio. So what they actually did was built the control room and, and the platforms up until the kind of the base of the turbine, and then everything that went up higher after that was, was built by us. I, we'd had it described to us that the interior of this turbine was like a kind of almost like a jet tur engine turbine with the, the blades um, and they would be spinning. So we, we knew that as an arrangement and obviously they built part of that as when, you know, for the characters when they're actually fixing the turbine itself. But the we hadn't ever really kind of got as far with them as solving how it, the arrangement of those blades and, and the, you know, the rest of the blades outside of the set area. So that, that was kind of designed or, or an area where we kind of ran with the, the principle of the design we'd been given, but actually kind of gave them something new. I think you know there are a lot of challenges. The, the slice was obviously built to a, a size, and we built our set to a size and everything. But um, you know, there, there's moments when they're getting hoisted up, uh, which obviously they're just being hoisted up in a studio into into the air. And in in some places, we're then having to kind of take over that move, um, sell it as a higher space. There, there's shots looking down from up above where they were kind of essentially in this small section of set looking down, and obviously, you know that at that point we were peering down at virtual set and bits of tiles that we've put together and, and um, you know and then obviously there's the animation of the doors coming off themselves. I think that was important to to the clients that it felt like they were big heavy swinging doors that have not come off before and so you know there was a, a lot of work there and in, also in kind of increasing the drama as it as a, as the sequence went on to the point where you know pipes are bursting everywhere and exploding which you know was an all cg shot so yeah there's quite a chunk of <laughs> chunk of work in that section in, in get, getting you know the actors up into the top of that um space see some hidden surprises as well like when they're hoisting tools up you know that so there's the blade that's been fixed that goes up there's a trolley cart that goes up um and all of those were just essentially shot static hanging on a on a cable and we had to just basically you know animate them going up and and run i think that became a quite a challenge because obviously you're in order to sell the illusion of something rising up in space you actually need to pan the background down but but you're sort of doing creative camera work because it's supposed to look like it's on a pulley and the camera's following it so there's quite a lot of round tripping to get the right sense of weight to the camera and also you know animating these things going up other things you don't realize like there's a lot of in the turbine room there's a lot of shots um, where they're discussing taking the doors off and they're actually sat in the control room of the turbine and, and all of that space outside the windows is basically blue screen so that you, you know there's an awful lot of dialogue and and shots where we're kind of showing that environment through windows that you know as well as being down there in the environment itself in the environment that was the kind of digger void I mean, that was supposed to be a much bigger space because that was the kind of raw silo, just the hole that everything had been built into. So I think it, it ended up being something like 550 feet in diameter. And actually what was built there was a number of small platforms from the set. And, and then we had to kind of basically do the entire environment. So mostly that was entirely digital, bar the, the small platforms that the actors were standing on. In the course of the action, the actors come down through quite a journey from the top to the bottom, all of which, you know, had to be sort of worked out. And, and so for us, 
that was a big challenge because although there was certain designs for the way the drill heads were supposed to look, you know, the, the actual arrangement of that as a, as a space needed to be solved um, by us. So there, there was some um, art department geometry that had been used to partly build the sets and f also facilitate their sort of concept drawings and paintings and stuff. Um, and so we'd, we essentially took that as a start point and, you know, um, we obviously had LIDAR for the um, individual pieces of set, which we'd kind of, broadly speaking, lined up in, in the kind of um, space. And then we, you know, we, we basically imported that sort of geometry and started from there and had a look at like, you know, what, what were the problems as we start looking at through different hero shots where the problems were in terms of as a space and stuff. You, you really come in from the roof of that space and then you go right the way down to the very bottom. So there were sections when Juliet, the main character, has to descend through the drill heads, which is obviously, you know, um, entirely uh, CG. And then when they get down below, you have a different set of problems because you're trying to sell this space from below when you've been looking at it largely from the middle or up above. So that there was all sorts of micro kind of uh, problems to solve as we went down through. With regards to that asset and, and sort of how it was sort of realised across the spaces, I mean, there were parts of that asset that were built standalone, like the spider arms that kind of come up with drill heads on the end of them and the framework as a sort of circumference and then the tower itself. But th those things were built as a, as a singular kind of model, if you like, or asset, and then they were procedurally disguised to, to look different and also deployed um, or they call it instanced, you know, within this kind of environment. So although they had their own sort of unique ability to be positioned, everything was rigged so we could we could change the angles of the arms and stuff. They effectively were the same model underneath and the same asset underneath, and then they were just kind of deployed during the layout process. In in keeping those that sense of perspective, we were helped by the fact that they had very big sweeping camera moves for a lot of a lot of the shots. But then you know, certain shots as well just kind of lent themselves to that amazing space. As soon as you've got all these arms and the diggers in there and you put a moving camera on, it suddenly opens the space up and looks great. The ones we struggled more with were actually the shots that were a bit more static because you haven't got that kind of sense of parallax and that big opening of the spaces and stuff. So in some respects, the, the, the photography that we received definitely helped with that. Um, but then on top of that, there's the you know the lighting of those scenes because you've got in a vast space like that you expect little pockets of light because it's so big there's a, that sense of depth the way you, you almost just get silhouetted shapes at times through the gloom in some respects less detail is more you know because you get those big impactive shapes that make you understand that it's vast rather than having everything on display all the time with the, the void and, and Juliet going off of the the edge I remember the first time I saw the 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 cut or the bidding quick time for that and, and it basically just said Juliet descends down into the you know and that was it kind of had no idea what what we were sort of getting from that and the shot her kind of going over the edge um, f for real uh, on their the set that they had but then after that it became um, a bunch of blue screen shots with with Juliet just sort of either hanging on the rope or descending a rope and sometimes they shot from slightly elevated angle sometimes it was from flat on and um, it really became a, a sort of initially a layout exercise to kind of work out how she she was to get down over the number of shots to the bottom where she actually sort of falls and stuff um, but then there are a number of shots where you know the very the very last shot of um, I think it's episode two with the, you know she's fallen down the rope and hanging above the water and then the camera pulls out and reveals this vast space and her sort of hanging there you know that was shot sort of with a, a static Juliet hanging from a rope and then and then we obviously had to kind of reposition her in that space and pull the camera back and in doing that it meant that we had to extend ropes and I think as well when you come back in um, episode three back in you, you know the very opening shot finds her back hanging at the bottom and there's this big sweeping shot that comes down through all the drills and finds her at the bottom um, and obviously that was shot from an angle but but static so we had to sort of reconcile the end point of that angle but then also be able to extrapolate that back out into a, a, a much bigger camera move and, and sort of effectively project her in and rebuild the rope that she's hanging on and, and 
put a bit of swing on her and you know it's quite yeah a lot of big challenges in some of those shots.